And the uh, prosecutor, you may resume your question. Yeah, the accusation. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, please. Um, Mr. Witness, we were talking about uh, arrests of people uh, who tried to escape or flee um, trapping Tamar. I want to direct you to uh, a two responses you gave uh, in your two interviews, um, starting with your OCIJ interview, which is document E319-19.3. At answer 57. Question. When you were a soldier, did your chief ever give you a list and order you to arrest anyone whose name was on the list? Answer. No, this work was carried out by militiamen. My unit did not do this work, but sometimes I received an order from the upper echelon to arrest someone who was on the run. Sometimes I managed to catch them, but other times they managed to escape." End of quote. And in your DC CAM interview, E3-9060, ERN Khmer, 00733024, that's Khmer ERN 733024, English 00728726, and French 01123681. Question. So, as you were in the troops, your role was to guard and inspect the dam, checking if there was damage. Did you also guard against something else? Answer. Guard against everything. If they contacted us and we found people escaping, we would arrest them. Even after the arrest, we could not kill them. We arrested them and sent them over to the superiors to deal with them. End of quote. Mr. Witness, does that refresh your memory that while arrests uh, were not your primary function, that there were some occasions uh, where you and your unit uh, were assigned and arrested workers who tried to escape from the site? travailleurs qui cherchaient à s'enfuir du site. A worker, uh, sometimes we uh, try to do that, and if the person was rearrested, then the person would be sent to his respective unit so that the unit chief uh, would deal with him. Uh, in the uh, answers I read, you referred to receiving an order from the upper echelon to try to arrest someone uh, who was who had escaped. When you referred to upper echelon, who, who was it specifically that the orders came from um, down to your unit? Who was it that provided those orders? The order came from Tanat. His order was to catch those workers who were fleeing from the mobile unit. And if we could catch them, then we would send them to the upper echelons to resolve the matters. And specifically, when those workers were caught, uh, who were they turned over to? You've said that they were turned over to the upper echelon or your superiors. Specifically, uh, who would those workers be turned over to? 
vous, ces travailleurs. The men or the person would be given back to the chief of the unit or the chief of the uh, regiment. Were you aware, um, Mr. Witness, of any instances where workers were killed at the Trapping Tma Dam worksite? été exécutés sur le site du barrage de Trapéantra. I didn't have uh, a full understanding about the killing at the Trapéantra Dam work site as uh, our duty did not have to deal with that. We had to uh, stand guard at the Trapeant Modern worksite and we adhered to this uh, instruction, otherwise uh, we would risk our life. I understand that. Um, more specifically, um, can you tell us, tell the court please, uh, what happened to workers at the Trapping Tma Dam who said they could not work at night because of night blindness? Can you please tell the court what happened to those people? I heard from workers in the mobile unit for those who had night uh, blindness. Some of them actually did not have a night blindness, so they made a test of them. They were instructed to walk toward a pit, and if they actually avoid the pit, then they would be accused of pretending to have a night blindness. And they would be re-arrested, arrested rather. I'd like to ref uh, you to refer to, if you could, uh, your OCIJ interview, E39060. I'm sorry, yeah, your DC CAM interview, E39060. Uh, the ERN references Khmer. 00733020 through 021, English 00728724, French 0112-3679 through 3680. And I quote, your statement uh, in your DC CAM interview, quote, when one was having night blindness, the person was accused of having consciousness blindness. The big or small unit of which that person was a member transported the person to the pits. If the person avoided the pits, they would say that the person did not have night blindness. Those pits, it would result in death if you fell into them. And continuing below on the same page. If the person was led to a pit and avoided the pit, the accompanying person would push that person into the pit. Question, did you witness the event? Answer, I saw it. Because it had nothing to do with the troops, they did the work amongst themselves. The killings of people were not done by troops, but by the chief of battalion, regiment, and company. End of quote. Uh, Mr. Witness, is it correct, as you told DC CAM, uh, that you witnessed these events? They did what they had to do. 
President and Defense Council, uh, Consum On, do you have the floor? Consum On, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make my remark on the extract from by the co prosecutor. In the Khmer version, the witness did not uh, state that uh, falling into the pit would result in death. And uh, it referred to those who avoided the, the pit, then the person would be pushed into the pit. Thank you, Council. I read the English translation. I don't understand the inconsistency between them. Um, Mr. Witness, um, let me ask you about these pits. Um, where were the pits? located at the work site, and how deep were they? The pit was not far from where they uh, got uh, the dirt for the dam site, and the depth was about one meter. And your statement in here indicates that if people avoided the pit, that someone would push them into that, into the pit. Is that correct? Did you see that happen? Yes, I saw it. People who had this psychological sickness and if they avoided the pit and they were pushed into the pit and they might have joined this location or swollen ankle. And for people who were found out to light, to have lied to them, they will be uh, re-educated or reprimanded, but uh, falling into the pit uh, did not result in death, but uh, injury. Do you know? President, uh, Defense Council Copper, do you have the floor? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to make an observation as um, following up on the uh, observation or objection from my um, colleague from the Houston Panty. If, I mean, indeed, in the English version, I, I agree with the prosecution. It says those pits, it would result in death if you fell into them. Now, if that sentence doesn't appear in the original Khmer version, I find that quite troubling. Uh, so I would be really interested, um, and, and considering the, the evidence just given um, by the witness that it is only a pit of one meter and that you, your ankle would get swollen, uh, I think this is um, a difference that I would like to have cleared uh, when it comes to translation. So the request really is, what does the original Khmer version say? Does it say something to the effect it would result in death if you fell into them? The parties are certainly able to pursue this and review the Khmer original. It's not something I can do standing here now. Uh, let's uh, revisit this after people who can interpret and translate. President, actually we have the witness here before us and you can clarify the matter with him, uh, co-prosecutor. Yeah, I will clarify with the witness, but the issue about the transcript I think is something that will have to be dealt with uh, later by people who can review the original Khmer transcript. Uh, Mr. Witness, um, we want to make sure this is clear. Um, the people uh, who avoided the pits and were pushed into them, did any of them die, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, none of them 
died. They wanted to know whether they, those workers pretended to, to be sick in order to avoid uh, going to work by telling them that they had uh, night blindness. For that reason, those people were led into uh, walking into the pits. And if they actually fell into the pits, then they would be allowed to rest uh, at night. However, for those who did not fall into the pits, they would be accused of uh, pretending to be sick and then they would be reprimanded or criticized and if after one or two occasions they still repeat uh, this uh, imaginary sickness, then they would be taken away and killed. Let's, let's start first of all with people who actually did have Question. night blindness and who were forced to walk and fell into these pits. Were any of them injured as a result of being forced to walk into the pits at night time when they couldn't see? For people who actually had a uh, night they were about to step into the pits, but uh, they were stopped by the people at the pit, and they knew that they, these people or these workers actually had night blindness. However, for other workers who presume, who pretended to be to have night blindness, they would step away from the pit, and then they would be called for re-education, as actually they pretended to have night blindness. And for the people who were determined to be pretending and who were sent for re-education, do you know, do you know what happened to them after they were sent for re-education, or were you not involved in the process? On the re-education issue of those uh, workers, it was the duty of the uh, unit chiefs or group chiefs uh, uh, of the mobile units. Those people would be criticized and they had to be refreshed and they had to stop lying through the unit chiefs again. And what about people who couldn't be refashioned, Mr. Witness? What happened to them? If after re-education the person was not refashioned or changed, then the unit chief would have to deal with that issue. And do you know how unit chiefs, chiefs dealt with situations like that? The solution was to kill that worker. La solution consistait à tuer ce travailleur. Mr. Witness, did you know of any locations at or near uh, the Trapping Tamas site um, where people were taken for execution? Regarding the uh, Antropian Tumult Dam and its uh, vicinity, I never heard of uh, the center. Was there a security center in Phnom Srok district? There was a district security center at the Knumsrok district. And was there a sector security office? And if so, where was the sector security office located?
answer for the sector security office. Réponse. It was uh, located at the current uh, district office. And in fact, uh, it was a concrete house Et which turned into a security center and which is currently the district office. Just to clarify, Mr. Witness, the, the location you're just talking about, the concrete house, that is at the current location of the district office. Are you talking about where the location of the Phnom Srok security office, or was that the Sector 5 security office? Could you clarify that? The Phnom Srok security, security Office it belongs to the Phnom Srok District. Cela As for the uh, Sector 5 district, Security Office, it was located in Swai. And when you say Swai, are you referring to Sisapon Provincial Town? De la ville provinciale de Sisapon? Yes, it is at the Swai C Sapon. And that office at the time was known as Sector 5 Security Office. I want to turn to a few uh, general questions about the conditions at Trapping Tama. Um, starting with work hours at the site. Uh, can you tell us? what the work hours were uh, during the time you were at the Trapping Tama Dam work site. The uh, mobile unit workers started working from 7 a.m. till 11 a.m. And it, uh, they resumed uh, again from 1 to 5 p.m. And then again from 6 to 10 p.m. Let me just clarify something with you. In your OCIJ interview, uh, E319 slash 19.3.20 at answer 81, um, you indicated that work started at 6 a.m. Um, just now you said 7 a.m. Um, can you give us your best recollection? Was it 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. that workers uh, started working at Trapping tomorrow? For my unit, we started working at 5 a.m. and continued until 11, and then we had lunch at 12 p.m. In regards to work, uh, during nighttime, uh, how often did people have to work at nighttime while you were at Trapping Tama? Was it every night or was it only some nights? They continued working in this shift every day until the dam project was completed. What can you tell us about um, the food rations and work quotas uh, at the Trapping Tama Dam worksite? Uh, 
for the Dam Construction workers, the workers who would be given a can of rice each per day. And did you know what the, if those workers had a work quota in terms of the amount of dirt they had to dig and carry each day? In general, the quota was not meant for an individual worker. However, it applied to uh, the unit as a whole, and the uh, the measurement was in terms of a land measurement of uh, height with 10 meters uh, width, and the unit had to carry the. Uh, the dirt, and if they could complete the work quota, then they will be given a can of rice each per day. And for those who failed to meet the work quota, then the ration was reduced to gruel. In your uh, DC CAM interview, uh, Mr. Witness, you referred to there being uh, what you called special units uh, that had different quotas and different food rations than the regular workers. Uh, can you explain to the court uh, what these special units were? A while after, male and female youths were selected to put in the so-called special unit, and for one cubic meter, they only carried them in baskets, and they would make only ten trips, and they would be given the uh, rice, a can of rice each for the workers in this uh, so-called special unit. And as I stress uh, again, they only carried the ten, they only made 10 trips of carrying uh, on the carrying baskets to carry this one cubic meter of dirt. Let me refer you to your DC CAM interview. Um, E3 slash 9060, Khmer ERN 00733011, English 00728, 716 through 717, and French 0112. 3673. I quote, members of special units were given two cans of rice each day. Members of on-foot units were given one can of rice each day. A special units would carry one cubic meter of earth in eight carrying trips. Women were even running while carrying the baskets back and forth. These were the special units. End of quote. Uh, I want to make sure I understand correctly. Uh, are you saying that these special units received uh, higher food rations and had to perform more work? Or do I not understand? Or is that incorrect? Can you clarify were these special units units that had um, higher work quotas and received, therefore received greater food rations? Is that right? The special unit workers work more progressively, so the food ration was more than the ordinary mobile unit workers. 
and in terms of clothing, then they had a better clothing to wear than the uh, ordinary barefoot uh, mobile unit workers, and they were uh, mo an exemplary model for the mobile uh, units. And how many workers at Trapping Tama were in uh, such a special unit? Uh, that received um, more, uh, a larger amount of food and uh, more progressive work assignments. In the special unit, uh, they actually had a force of workers of a, a size of a regiment. And they were female youth. This unit of female youth that you refer to as a special unit, how many, uh, how many females were in this unit? In that unit, uh, there were women in two big units, and there were male youths in another unit. And they were the absolute force, and they were uh, selected to be part of this so called special unit. Let me read to you. Um, Another excerpt um, from your DC CAM interview, E3 slash 9060. This is at Khmer 00733030. English 00728730. French 01123684. Through 85. I quote. The special unit was composed of only 100 members. The rest were normal mo mobile units, which were estimated in the tens of thousands. Four to five persons of the normal mobile unit carried one cubic meter of earth, and they had small rations. And continuing below on the same page, question, so the remaining tens of thousands of other people were given only one can of rice per day? Answer, yes, one can per day, uh, end of quote. Uh, does this re refresh your recollection, Mr. Witness, that uh, the special unit that you've described uh, only had 100 Members? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. As for the special uh, unit, uh, there were female members uh, who serve in the special unit. And they were entitled to one uh, can of rice um, uh, per day uh, as for the food ration for them. Where did the people Question. at the Trapping Tama Dam site uh, get water to drink? Les gens qui travaillent sur le chantier du barrage de Trapping Tama. They uh, carry the water for us uh, to to drink. Uh, there were a group of uh, laborers who brought the water for us to drink. And other members also carry the water from the nearby ponds and stream to drink. Mr. Witness, did uh, people at the Trapiang Tama site get sick often? Uh, what did you observe while you were there in terms of the health of the workers at the site?
The workers at uh, Trepang Tmo uh, site, uh, there were many uh, people who were sick. Uh, some were uh, poisoned uh, by the eating vile plants or vile mushroom, and uh, they also suffer from many different kinds of uh, diseases. Uh, some had their body you know, swollen, uh, swollen body. Let me refer you to, again, your DC CAM interview, E3 slash 9060, Quote, I quote, uh, Mr. Witness, this is what you said uh, to DC CAM, quote, people were emaciated without enough food to eat. Lack of nutrition led to exhaustion. For some, their knees were bigger than their heads. Uh, end of quote. Uh, Mr. Witness, was this the case? Uh, during the entire time you were at the Trapping Tama work site? Tout au long de votre séjour au site du chantier du barrage de Trapping Tama? Yes. Réponse. Oui. Uh, it was uh, the case. Uh, at the times, uh, those who were uh, skinny, uh, they did not uh, have sufficient uh, food to eat, and some uh, had to um, do overwork, and uh, they uh, were not uh, given enough food, so they became very thin and weak. And of course, others, you know, had their knee bigger than their heads. They ask uh, for uh, medicine uh, when uh, they were sick, uh, but they were given nothing more than the uh, rabbit drop uh, pill. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I want to ask you um, also about the uh, hy hygiene at the work site. Um, can you tell us where did people go to relieve, relieve themselves? Were there latrines, or where was it that people would have to go to relieve themselves? Les gens pouvaient-ils le faire leurs besoins? At the time, the upper echelon uh, constructed uh, the uh, latrine uh, for us uh, in uh, the different units, uh, so that we could uh, relieve ourselves. And uh, but anyway, it was not enough. Others had to uh, relieve themselves uh, somewhere around uh, that uh, latrine. Were there a lot of flies and insects at the work site? Des mouches, des insectes sur le chantier. Yes, yes, there were a swarm of uh, flies, oui, il y avait beaucoup de mosquitoes. Et des moustiques aussi. At night, uh, if we did not have mosquito Les nets, nuits, uh, we were, uh, you know, lots of mosquitoes uh, bit us. And in the morning, we had to get up early et in order to go to work. I want to turn to another subject um, for the time we have left today. Do you remember a, a period uh, when the local cadres in the Northwest Zone were arrested and replaced by cadres who came from the Southwest? Do you remember that? And what can you tell us about what happened to the Northwest Zone cadres at that time.
At the time when I was working at the Tukang Tomo Construction Dam, I heard the upper echelon. Uh, they told me that uh, they would arrest uh, the northwest zone uh, cadres, and they uh, summoned them for the meeting. And uh, the cadres from the southwest zone uh, carried out the arrest. Uh, they accused them of uh, betraying. When you say that you were told uh, by the upper echelon uh, that they were going to arrest the cadres, who, who was it that told you this? Who, who do you mean by the upper echelon? Tana. Tana was my superior, and uh, he knew uh, that, and he told uh, to his uh, subordinates uh, that we had to be extra vigilant uh, in our work. And then uh, later on, the southwest zone cadres uh, came to the northwest zone. And you said that when people were arrested, they were called to attend meetings or study sessions. Uh, can you tell us uh, how it was, how it happened uh, when people were called to these study sessions? Who would tell them that they had to go, and where was it that they were told to go? I did not know the details uh, of uh, how it was uh, carried out, but I only uh, heard from others that uh, they were summoned to attend the meeting or a study a session, and then they uh, disappeared uh, ever since. Let me read to you a, an excerpt from your DC CAM interview, E3 slash 9060. Uh, this is at Khmer 00733047, English 00728742743, and French 01123695. Let me repeat the Khmer ERN. It is 00733047. This is what you said, um, Mr. Witness. Quote, those Southwesterners did not even bother to point a gun at us. They would call us to have a chat. Then they told us to go up to the concrete house and they arrested us. They put us in a truck and sent us to the secret place, the secret place at Svai Sisapon, the police station of Mr. Lon. End of quote. And Mr. Witness, um, who, who was this person, uh, Mr. Lon, and what was the police station that he had responsibility for in Sisapon? Uh, in the uh, security um, uh, section attached to uh, Sector 5, I only heard of uh, a man by the name of Vun, uh, who was in charge of security. Now, I want to ask you about some of the uh, local Northwest Zone cadres identified in your interviews and what happened to them during this period. Uh, first of all, uh, you identify a person named Ta Hong. Who was Ta Hong and what happened to him uh, at or around the time the Southwest cadres arrived in your region? 
tour de cette période à laquelle les cadres du Sud-Ouest sont arrivés dans votre région. Upon the arrival of the uh, Southwest Zone cadres, cadres, they uh, called for a meeting. Ils ont convoqué And Tahang une... was arrested. Tahang y a, y, y a été arrêté. And uh, from that time onward, uh, people knew that uh, the Northwest Zone uh, cadres were arrested by the Southwest Zone. Avaient été arrêtés par les cadres de la zone Sud-Ouest. What was Tahun's position? Quelle était les, quelles étaient les fonctions de Tahun? He was the uh, chief of sector Réponse. five. C'était le chef du secteur cinq. Did you know a Question. cadre named Ta Mang from Prenet Prey? And can Prenet. you tell us what happened to Et him? When the Southwest cadres arrived. Et pouvez-vous nous dire ce qui lui est arrivé quand les cadres de la zone sud-ouest sont arrivés? When the Southwest zone uh, arrived, uh, Mao was also uh, convened to a meeting, and at that time he was uh, arrested. We've uh, talked uh, a little today already about okay. Taval, Nous avons déjà parlé um, de Taval, the Sector 5 mobile work chairman who supervised uh, the Trapping Tama Dam. Uh, what happened to Taval when the Southwest cadres arrived? The President, uh, Council, you uh, have the floor. You may proceed. Thank Maître you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur um, I have some trouble um, with the way this question is formulated. Uh, when the Southwest Zone cadres arrived, um, it was fine in respect of um, the first two Northwest Zone cadres. Um, but the next one that we're discussing, I think the prosecution will agree, was arrested four months later, uh, three months later, um, and the last Northwest Zone cadre was arrested a year later. So um, saying that there is a, a wave of arrest the moment that the Southwest Zone cadre is arrived is simply incorrect. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, Council is not here to give evidence. Uh, I can assure him from the S-21 records uh, that he's wrong. Uh, there was a wave of arrests. It's documented in the records of S-21. Um, I'm actually going to uh, make some references to try to refresh memory on dates, so I will get to some of those S-21 records. Uh, in the meantime, I'm asking the witness simply what happened uh, when the Southwest Cadres arrived and getting his recollection. Uh, then we'll take a look at the S-21 records to see when it took place. So if I may proceed, um, the question I'd like to ask the witness now is what happened to Taval after the Southwest Cadres arrived des cadres de la zone with your leave, Mr. President. Avec la permission de la Chambre, Monsieur le Président. Le Président. Yes, uh, you may proceed, oui, uh, Prosecutor. What happened to Taval, Mr. Witness? Qu'est-il arrivé à Taval, Monsieur le Témoin? After Tamang was arrested, um, he disappeared ever since. Then for about four, uh, around 10 days or so, uh, they uh, arrested uh, Tawal. They called him for a meeting. How did you learn that Tawal uh, had been arrested? Because I learned from uh, Tana, Je su de Tana, 
who uh, escaped uh, and uh, he uh, came to meet with me at the uh, construction uh, site. Uh, he told me that uh, they had arrested all the cadres in the northwest zone uh, and that arrest was carried out by the southwest cadres. And the last person I wanted to ask you about was Tahat. Who was Tahat? And what happened to him after the Southwest cadres arrived? Que lui est-il arrivé une fois que les cadres du Sud-Ouest sont venus? After the Southwest uh, zone cadres uh, arrived. Uh, Tahat also was called to attend a meeting at Svai. A été convoqué à une réunion à Svai. Do you remember the year and month when Tahung, Tahmang, Taval, and Tahat were arrested? Are you able to tell us what year and month that took place? To the best of my recollection, um, it was souvenirs. about at the beginning of the year and toward the end of the year, um, we attained peace. De l'année et à la fin de l'année, nous avons eu la paix. Let me see if I can refresh your memory on this, Mr. Witness. There are a number of surviving records relating to these people. Um, First of all, document E3 slash 1181, E3 1181, is a report uh, titled General View of Sector 5. It's dated 27 June 1977, uh, and it records that the Sector 5 Secretary Hung had been arrested as of that date. As of June 1977, we have a, a document E3 slash 1900, E3 1900. It is an S21 prisoner list titled Names of Prisoners Smashed on the 6th of March 1978. Number 12 on that list is. The President, the Council, President. you may proceed. Vous avez la parole, uh, Maître. Ah, yes, it does. Um, we have uh, different information when it comes to uh, Nous avons des informations uh, Men Chun alias Hong. Uh, he alias was arrested Hume, in February 1977. I'd be curious to the site. There's multiple documents that establish it was June 1977, uh, including a reference in uh, his S21 confession that specifically gives a specific date in June also. Uh, in any event, uh, if you have a document, you're entitled to ask the witness about it during your examination. Uh, Mr. President, may I proceed? The President, uh, Judge Levenge, you may proceed now. Counsel Coppe, could you please give us the references of the document that you were referring to? Thank you. If you allow me to do that, not just now, but um, uh, tomorrow morning early. Uh, if I may continue, um, in addition to the document relating to Sector 5, Secretary Hung, uh, E3 1900 uh, records that an Oak, Oak Hon alias Val 
identified as an assistant to Sector 5, uh, entered S-21 on 29 June 1977. And in regards to Après Net Pré, District Secretary on Mon, uh, E-342, E-3 slash 342, the OCP revised S21 prisoner list, number 57 on that list records that Hmong entered S21 on the 28th of June 1977. Uh, we have, so we have three documents uh, that is, all have dates, the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th of June 1977. Um, Mr. Witness, uh, I'm, I realize this was a long time ago. Um, does that refresh your recollection uh, that these arrests took place at some point in mid-1977, possibly in June of that year? At that time, I was uh, very young, but uh, the arrest was uh, carried out um, at uh, uh, quite close to one another, actually. Uh, they arrested, first of all, Taval and then followed by others. Uh, and they intended, actually, to arrest all uh, the cadres at the time. You've talked about... Um, uh, a deputy okay. commander, Ta Nak, from Phnom Srok District Military. Uh, what happened to Ta Nak? And then uh, Tanak will also uh, call for the Tanak study uh, session. Convoqué, uh, and session. as his subordinate, I uh, knew that uh, he would uh, be arrested if he ordonné. went there. And then uh, he Je did not uh, listen to me. And he uh, went to attend the meeting, but then I il did not see him uh, return. And then his wife told everyone that uh, Tanak had already been arrested. Mr. Witness, was there a time that the... Monsieur le témoin, y avait-il une époque où... The President, uh, Council Kongsamon, you may proceed. Council Kongsamon, thank you, Mr. President. Merci, I would Monsieur like to uh, request uh, that the co-prosecutor uh, make reference to the document E3 slash uh, 1900. Uh, it seems to me that this document uh, doesn't appear uh, in the case file, uh, so could you please ask the uh, prosecutor to verify this? The President, Mr. Prosecutor, can you uh, please uh, verify uh, this uh, document reference? Uh, yes, um, uh, I think he's referring to something from five or five minutes ago, but I, the document is E3 slash 1900, E31900. Mr. Witness, um, my next question uh, is about yourself. Um, was there any time where the Southwest Cadres tried to arrest you, uh, and if so, can you tell the court what happened? After they arrested all uh, cadres, uh, we all uh, separated. I uh, fled uh, to my house, and then the uh, southwest uh, cadre arrested me. And then I tried to uh, 
uh, escaped uh, eventually, and luckily I could uh, escape. Where were you taken when you were arrested, Mr. Witness? Où vous a-t-on emmené, Monsieur le témoin? I was taken and sent to one uh, to commune, Prague Priest commune. À la commune de Prague Priest. How was it that you were met, able to escape? Question. Et comment avez-vous réussi à vous échapper? At that time, I used uh, Khmer traditional martial arts and I uh, knocked uh, down uh, the security guards over there and then I uh, fled the scene. Faire tomber le garde et je me suis enfui. And my last question uh, today, Mr. Witness, before we break, uh, after the arrests okay, of your commander, uh, Nak and Chun, uh, what happened to your uh, military unit uh, after your commanders were arrested? After my superior of arrested, uh, they accuse uh, the, our village uh, as the uh, traitors. Uh, so uh, they uh, suspected us of being traitors. They intended to arrest uh, all of us, and then we had to uh, took refuge uh, in the jungle. At that time, we fled into the forest. Mr. President, I can continue uh, with questions if you wish me to, to go on. I see we're at 4 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Prosecutor. The time is now appropriate for the uh, day adjournment. Uh, the chamber shall adjourn uh, now, and uh, we will resume uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, uh, the 12th of August uh, 2015, starting at 9 a.m. The chamber uh, would uh, continue to hear the witness, Lord Sui, and uh, we will summon uh, another tea. Uh, TCW uh, 937, and I uh, ask members and uh, pa relevant parties to be present uh, tomorrow morning. And Mr. Lonsui, for your information, your testimony has not yet been concluded, so I invite you to come to testify uh, here before the chamber again tomorrow. Uh, court officers. Uh, instructed now to uh, coordinate with the uh, WESU uh, to assist the transportation of uh, Mr. Uh, Law Sui to his uh, place and have him back in this courtroom on Wednesday, the 12th of August 2015, before 9 a.m. Security guards are instructed to bring the two uh, co-accused, Mr. Nunji and Mr. Kilsen Pond, back to the detention facility and have uh, them back uh, in the hearing on the 12th of August 2015 before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned.